Greetings, friends. It's a beautiful day here in central Georgia, USA, a bit earlier than it is there in the UK or wherever you may be around the world. And where I know Georgia is considered the country. My small town, Lizella, has zero traffic lights. They call them robots in South Africa. And on any given day, as I look through the windows of my workspace I, in my yard, I'll see creatures of many kinds. I'll see deer. I'll see turtles, maybe rabbits, a squirrel or two, at times an armadillo, and rarely a rat snake. But something that's very common often gets my attention. It is the anthill. It's hard to see through the window like this, but I have my dad's binoculars. My dad bought these when I was three years old, way back in 1930. <laughs> And I will use these to look out and I look at those anthills and I'm often intrigued. I can't help myself. I go outside to the anthill and I observe. And every once in a while, I'll notice a creature is caught in the anthill. It could be a grasshopper, a beetle, a wasp, or maybe a small lizard. The interesting thing is this. These creatures are several times larger than the ants. Now, I've been told ants can carry several times their weight. But these creatures are often five, six, seven times, 15, 20 times larger. But the moment that creature disturbs the ant hill, all of a sudden, ants come flurrying out. They come scurrying out and they attack that creature. And before long, they have ripped that creature limb from limb. I can walk away. Return an hour and a half later, and there's very little evidence that a creature was there. The anthill is repaired, and normal service is resumed. Why in the round world did I tell you that? It took me a while to get this. But for those ants, when they work together, they are stronger together. When they work together, they are stronger together. And I believe for you as a district, when you continue to work together, to learn together, to grow together, to inspire each other, you can and will be stronger together. No matter the size of the obstacle, and we can consider COVID-19 to be an obstacle, and several districts have had a difficult time surviving during COVID-19, but I believe that when you work stronger together, when you maintain a mindset that says we can grow, we can learn, we can inspire together, you can be stronger together. It's interesting. Oh, an ancient book of wisdom puts it this way. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. I never thought ants could teach me lessons about growing stronger together and, and inspiring each other. I didn't think about it. As a kid, I used to watch the ants and hope they didn't bite me because they're so painful. But the lesson of the ant applies to my life. And, you know, when you're younger, you don't quite get things because your brain doesn't quite come in quickly enough. But the ant taught me the lesson about how well we can do when we work together. I think back to many, many years to my wild and woolly youth, when I used to love to watch and to play my favorite sport, football. Now you're in the UK, you know what I mean. I live in the USA, they get it all wrong. They say football, <laughs> they do this. Come on, use your foot to kick a ball. Hello, right? <laughs> and the interesting thing is, I just love to watch. I used to watch a program called Star Soccer in Jamaica way back in the 60s. Heard of teams like Leeds and Arsenal and all these great teams. Names like Peter Lorimer and, and Georgie Best. Love the game. But I got to high school in Jamaica, and man, I wanted to play so badly. Now, please, my American friends, they have a hard time understanding this. But in Jamaica, when I went to school in the 70s, High school football was a big deal. In America, I have coached football here in America. It isn't uncommon for a high school game to have 50 to 100 people watching high school football players play their games. Not so in Jamaica. When we were in Jamaica, we were playing international rules. And, on the, and after a game, the entire sports page was devoted to high school football. A small country at the time, 1.7 million people, we had one national stadium. 
and our high school games were played in that national stadium. So can you imagine kids of 15, 16 years old, they want to play on their high school team so bad they can smell it. Mm, they can taste it. And my high school was no different. Our tryouts were in June for a season beginning in September. We had 18 uniforms to play for. And on the first day of tryouts, 150 boys showed up. Went to an all boys high school, 2000 boys. First day of tryouts, 150 boys showed up for 18 positions on that team. Do you think there was some competition there? Oh yeah. Now I had been the junior, what we call the Colts back then, captain the previous year at the tender age of 14. So I figured I'm gonna try out, I'm gonna make this team. My older brother also tried out, Woody. And he and I both made it to the last 22 guys. And final cut day, my brother did not make the team. But I did. <laughs> I made the team, and it was a thrill to be on this team. We're going to play in the national stadium. And there was one young man on our team, a skinny, not need buck teeth kid. We call his name is Leo. This kid worked so hard, it was crazy. He tried his best, and he got selected, one of the last subs. Wonderful. Our season began and we were doing really well. Young team, strong team. And throughout the season, our coach would have subs come on every now and again and get some playing time. Everyone except Leo. He was the only player to sit on the bench every single game. And the last game of the season was a time we got to the game to play in a cup semifinal. We were all so thrilled, all so excited. Now, I know you can't picture me at 15 years old playing ball, okay? But you need to understand something very, very important. When I was 15, I was young. When I was 15, I was strong. When I was 15, I had hair. <laughs> and I loved playing football. So we got to the stadium. Our last game of the season, if we win the semifinal, we got one more. It's a semifinal, but we are not winning the game. We're losing. And with 10 minutes to go in the game, our vice captain, Gilbert Chan, we called him Gilly, remember him clearly, he got injured. And our coach looked down the bench and he pointed at Leo. What? He said, your turn to warm up. Now picture this, we're playing in the national stadium. It was not unusual to have 10 or 15,000 people watching a high school football game in Jamaica in those days. And they saw Leo get up and do his jumping jacks, and he was great. Oh, Leo is going to play. Oh, man, check this out. What are awesome? And Leo began what I call the walk. You see, our bench in the stadium was up against the grandstand, which meant Leo had to walk down an angled cycling track, across a long jump pit, across eight lanes of running track to get to the field. He got to the sidelines and the official stopped him. Where are you going, son? I'm going in for number five. No, you're not. Well, what do you mean? Now, see your team has made all their subs. That can't be right. Well, call the coach, we'll bring him down. They called coach Alti McCoy. He was someone, he came down the cycling track, across long jump pit, across eight lanes running track, and he stood there and said, what's the problem, ref? Rev said, well, sir, your, your, your team has made all their subs. Coach said, no, no, look at my, my, my lineup sheet. We have goalkeeper, two subs, and now Leo. The rules say we get to have three subs plus a goalkeeper. No, coach, you're wrong. The rule says you get to have three subs, including the goalkeeper. You've subbed your goalkeeper. You've subbed two other guys. You've made all your subs. This young man has got to go back to the bench. He's not going to play today. All this is playing out in real time in front of 15,000 people. And dejectedly, Leo turns around to face that grandstand and walks across eight lanes of running track, across the long jump pit, up the angled cycling track, and he sits on the bench. The game ends. The season ends. He has not had one minute of playing time all year, and he has just been embarrassed in front of 
15,000 people. And I can remember it like it was yesterday because that kid's name is Leo Brown. Mark Leo Brown. That kid was me. And the following day, I got to school. My mates were there. And you know how friends can be at school, right? They, 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 they laughed in my face. Ha, 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 ha. Man, you got messed up. I wouldn't want to be you. Oh, oh sorry, man. Ha, 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 ha. I was 15 years old. It was a dream of mine to be on this team, to be on that field. And, and my friends, the ones who I thought would support me, laughed at me. So what do I do? What would you do? I could quit or I could wait one year to go back to that stadium. One year. Do you have any idea what a year is to a 15 year old? How long that is? But you know what? I made a decision to try again. And a year later, I went back to that tr tryout with 160 guys. <laughs> I made the team again. But this time, the following year, I went back to that stadium. I went down that cycling track, across that long jump pit, across eight lanes of running track. And I took my place on the field as the starting right fullback of my high school team. And that year, we finished as champions, the number two team in the nation. But here's the lesson. Yes, the guy on the corner in the back, it's me. But here's the lesson. Our coach was interviewed after our victory, and he said Calabar's win was all teamwork. It was all teamwork. Let me clarify for you. When your team wins at that level, it's an all-star selection process. And when you win that level, maybe six, maybe even seven players on your team will get an all-star selection spot. My high school team that year, we had two all-star spots, none of whom started the all-star game. They went in as subs towards the end because we were not a team of stars. The deeper lesson I didn't get right away. The deeper lesson is this. I had to understand my role in the team in 1976 to really appreciate the power of what it means for us to be stronger together. That team of young men who were devoid of stars, who became champions, were stronger together. And for me personally, I had to understand that my role was to help my teammates get better. My role was to help my teammates get better. It is my conviction, District 91, that as a district, you can and will grow stronger together if you all appreciate the role you play. Perhaps you thought to yourself, I'm only a sergeant at arms. I only do table topics. You know, I'm not going to be a CGD or a PQD or a CPA with a PhD. But the role you have is important in the anthill, in the beehive. Some are drones, some are workers, some tend the queen, some tend the babies. But each role is important. I had, to, I had to learn that being on the bench wasn't a curse, wasn't an embarrassment. It was purposeful. And the proof is I became a starting right fullback. My team was number two in the nation. And two years later, I was my team captain who played a final game, my last game of the season, which we lost. But I had learned, I had grown, and I began to understand that when we, are, we appreciate the role that we play, we can and will be stronger together. If I were to make a point about this, it's simply this. To accomplish any task, your role is valuable. A small role is valuable. You don't believe me? I told you I like football, right? Now, you're in the UK. You may, nothing, you may know nothing at all about the European Super League because you're in the UK. <laughs> But you also know the tumult, the uproar that surrounded this, it died in two days. Rivals all over, the, all over Europe came together with one common goal. We got to stop this. I'm not saying yes or no, left or right. I'm saying look at the evidence of what happens when you are stronger together. I say again, it is my conviction 
that you can accomplish any task. You will grow together. You will learn together. You will inspire each other together. Each other together. When you understand that your role, which may seem insignificant to you now, is important for the whole to be stronger together. The ants taught me something else. A couple of months ago, I found a sinkhole in my front yard and the local water department came. They put these huge orange barrels in the yard. It was huge orange barrels to protect it. They had caution tape around the hole. My front yard looked like a crime scene. <laughs> and two months later, they removed the barrels and left some spikes in the ground. Underneath the barrels, a huge ant mound had been built. But when the barrel came, it disturbed the mound and the ants were so intelligent. They may have tried to repair that anthill and thought, no, it's not safe here. Let's move. Within two days, I saw the remnant of the anthill, but nary an ant in sight. Together, they were able to pack up, relocate, leave. I didn't know where they went, but they did it together. They made a decision. We have to adjust. We have to change. Times are difficult. This home is no longer tenable or viable. Let's move on. Sadly, across our Toastmasters world, world, there have been districts this past year who were unable to move together, to adjust together, to adapt together, and move on. Some abandoned their contests, some abandoned their conferences, and some are still trying to rebuild what was lost, just as those ants, they, they failed to do what the ants did, and to rebuild and to readjust and to cope with the challenge of change. I ask you to understand, as insignificant as your role may seem to you, it is valuable for the growth, for the inspiration, for the education of your district. I ask you never ever again to say, I am only anything in your club, or I'm only anything in your area, division, or your district. Your role is important. You may be the one to inspire someone to achieve something they never thought possible. Believe me, I know. It was only somebody in my club who said, Mark, will you please take someone's place and be in the contest this year? And I said, yes. That was 27 years ago when I said yes, when somebody chose to inspire me, somebody who you may think to be insignificant because they weren't the president or the district director. No, we can inspire each other. And if you're honest with ourselves, if we're all honest, we can identify in our minds when we first began our Toastmasters journey, that someone helped us to grow. Someone helped us to learn. Someone inspired us to be our best. Someone inspired us to take on our responsibility we thought we could never do, but they supported us. And the cool thing is, as we grow stronger, everyone grows stronger. I'll bring you back to 1976. I didn't fully understand that as I was helping my teammates become better, sharper, score more goals, stronger defenders, better goalkeeping, I wasn't getting the playing time, but I was helping them to grow stronger. And in the process, how cool is this? I grew stronger as well. Never underestimate the power of your role to help your team grow stronger together. Never underestimate the power of community as you grow stronger together. And never underestimate the power of support and commitment to your community and to your team. I want to go one step further. Think of your district, not just only as your district, or maybe your community. I want you to cross a line with me today, to cross the line between community and family. I know they are different, but when they intersect, there is some degree of strength that comes from it, from which we can all benefit. I know, because for me, family is just as important. I found family, I found a tribe in Toastmasters. I entered I went to, because my uncle went, I said, I, I'm going to go too. He did it. I can do it too. I went to a meeting. I was a guest in my club for four months. Four months. But I began to see a community. I began to feel part of a family. And family helps each other during difficult times as well. Even when we're contestants against each other, 
We can still be community. We can still be family. I recall one particular incident took place in a contest many years ago at, a, at the inter-district level where a contestant had worked months to become a champion, completely forgot their speech and could not continue. And every other contestant in that contest rose to their feet, embraced that contestant, loved on them, encouraged them, and made them understand it's okay. Come back next time. How can we show our love? How can we show our strength? How can we show our support to those who can be stronger together with us? Well, friends, I'd love for you to be stronger as well. And I gotta admit, I, I don't have a lot of time to share some ideas with you, but I wanna tell you this. I believe that as a family, we can and will be stronger together. I really appreciate my Toastmasters family because they've done for me so many things that have gone beyond the Toastmaster experience. And I want to help you to be stronger as well. I have some tools I want to share with you very, very quickly, very, very briefly. For example, I co-host the Unforgettable Presentations podcast with my fellow Toastmaster, Darren LaCroix. It's a free podcast. We interview guests. We had Les Brown, world famous speaker on just Thursday. Scan that QR code. Check us out. We have tips, interviews. We have hard content to help you be a stronger and better speaker. By all means, please check us out. I want to give you a gift, a free MP3, how to explore your passion, to live the life you want. To, you, you want. To scan that QR code, get the free MP3, you'll get my updates, you'll find out what's happening in my world as I help you and other Toastmasters and speakers around the world become stronger. And if you maybe are a contestant or you're considering becoming a pro speaker, you're crossing that line and you may think, well, how can I find out about becoming a better speaker from, from, from a man like you? Well, very simply this, if you scan this QR code, you'll get info about coaching, if you're serious. If it's not for you, completely ignore that. Just understand one thing. I want you to be stronger in everything you do and I want you to be stronger as a family. Here's why. Because to me, family is part of my process. You see, back in 95, some of you know this, of course, that I was won the title. What you may not know is that in my family are the individuals who are my strongest team members. In 1995, I was living in New York, and I found myself one more time in the Toastmasters World Championship for the second year running. My family and I flew from New York across the USA all the way to California for this event. And as you know, now know, I was named the world champion of public speaking that day. And it was a thrill beyond comparison. The better thrill, the greater thrill, the bigger thrill for me is that I could share that with my fellow Toastmasters in District 46, New York, but I could also share it with my family. And that day after I won the contest, my family joined me on stage and my wife, Andrea, our three children, Andreen, Joel, and David, who are now 37, 34, and 26, were on stage as well. Now, I have absolutely no idea why my face has a strange look on it. <laughs> I can't explain. But there we were in August of 1995, a proud family. And I tell you what, my family support has been incredible. My daughter, Andrine, had given me a small greet, an envelope with a greeting card in it. Of course, I you know, couldn't look at it at the time, so I put it in my jacket pocket and I forgot all about it. An hour later, we were at, in our hotel room about to get dressed to go to the swimming pool. And I felt this card in my pocket, like, oh, oh wow, Andrine gave this to me. I pulled it out, unsealed the envelope, no paper cuts, thankfully, and pull out his greeting card. Congratulations, Daddy, we knew you could do it. Andreen signed it. My son, Joel, then seven, he signed it, left-handed, southpaw style. And David, who was about 10 months old, just kind of scrawled all over that thing. And my wife was there. I was so thrilled, I said, honey, look at what the kids did for me. They gave me this card, isn't this great? She said, baby, be quiet, there's a story here. I know, but the kids, honey, shut up and listen. Okay, darling. The kids 
went to the card store, they looked for a card, they saw that card, and they bought that card for you. I know, isn't it great? Listen to me, honey. Okay. They bought that card <laughs> with your money. They signed that card. They put it in the envelope. And they sealed the envelope before we left New York to come to California. Because that is how much your kids believe in you. And that is how much your kids support you. Wow. My kids are all adults now. They've grown up. They've gone away. My daughter is now married. And I got to do the wedding myself. But if they were here... I'd probably say, did you ever know that you're my hero and everything I would like to be? Now I can fly higher than an eagle. You are the wind beneath my wings. That's what my family has been to me. But truthfully, that's also what my fellow Toastmasters have been to me. Like wind beneath my wings. When I have had some failure, some disappointment, had a really bad presentation, I could talk to my fellow Toastmasters. I bombed. I, I failed. It's terrible. And one Toastmaster, Morgan MacArthur, said, listen, man, get back on the horse. You can do this. Like wind beneath each other's wings, we can be stronger together. We can grow together. We can learn together. We can inspire each other together. Remember, friends, the role you play may seem insignificant, but it is valuable. And if you treat each other as fellow club members, fellow district members, fellow community members, but if you intersect the idea of family, then you will be committed to each other through the most difficult times. Your role is invaluable. Your support is invaluable. And I urge you all to build even stronger relationships now. We can't be physically in the same presence. We are physically distanced, but socially connected. But it's a great opportunity to build relationships that last. And we can be as strong as a colony of ants. We can be even stronger together if we connect, if we reconnect and build those long lasting relationships. A final thought for you. We can grow, we can learn, and we can inspire together indeed. But the power of the lasting relationship will stay with you <clears throat> forever. Earlier, I mentioned my football coach, Alti McCoy, who was interviewed that day by the newspapers after we won that game. They got to remember this photograph was taken in 1977. And if my math is correct, that was about 44 years ago. Wow, 44 years. I met Alti in 76, began to play for him in 76, 45 years. Alti McCoy is now 76 years old. He has succumbed to glaucoma. He can't see. But every once in a while, my mobile will ring and I'll get a call from Alti McCoy, a man I met 45 years ago who taught me about football, but he taught me about community. He taught me about teamwork. He taught me about family. And we have maintained that relationship for 45 years. How long will your relationships last? If you understand your value, your role, is invaluable. If you understand your support is invaluable. If you understand the idea, the intersection between community and family will make us all stronger together. Like the ants, let's work together. Let's grow together. Let's learn together. Let's inspire together. And let's all be stronger together. Blessings to you all. Thank you, Mark. That was absolutely brilliant. And 
of all the things you said, three things that sort of struck out to me. One of them which made me laugh, which it doesn't matter how old you get, it's all, we all love to relish in sibling rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was, next time I see ants, I won't want to step on them. I think they can teach me something. And the third thing, the third thing is, if you want to actually be a family within a family, get involved in a conference in any way possible, because you really will be, and you are part of this family, you'll connect with people, or even get involved behind the scenes for the next conference. You'll be a family within a family. So thanks for those Stronger Together, Mark, absolutely brilliant. And I remind everybody, if someone's put the link in the chat, do link up to Mark's chats. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Blessings to all. Thank you. So very shortly, we'll be going into the Table Topics contest. Um, so just we've got a, a, probably a couple of minutes before they're all ready. So you, Mark, you're clear. some of you would have been, Thanks, I'm Mark. sure you've actually been. A I think we can speak contest. now, okay. And they've been a functionary or a judge in a contest. Or yes. Yes, well done, Mark. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Thank beautiful. You so I was in really a district beautiful. contest a few years ago and uh, it was in front of an audience. Oh, and in funny. those days we had to... It has everything we love about trying to find a battery pack on, on our... There it comes out with you, all the rhetorical devices, amazing pauses. Oh, thank you, Jill. You know, I'm it. already fainting. <laughs> oh, two seconds thinking you know they'll think that i've corpsed or, or you know just forgotten my lines so well i learned the pause can be powerful you give your audience time to reflect to think and to digest what you've said you know and and very often i have clients who they're oh look you can't see there's a deer in my backyard <laughs> a little oh, wow. deer. yeah i can't i can't turn the camera on and show it to you it's a deer in my backyard right now oh uh, how fabulous but I've learned that you know, my mentor, Patricia Fripp, says people learn best in moments of reflection. And the pause gives them time to think about it. It also can be for effect. It's like, a, you know, a sailor. Think, pause and think about that for a second. Ooh. Or the pause can also help to add some tension. What will happen next? What did he do? What did she say? How did he respond to that? The pause also gives me, as a speaker, the opportunity to physically reflect the emotion of the character. Surprise, disappointment, hurt, shock, mm. dumbfounded. All of those emotions can be visually displayed in the moments of silence between the words. Yeah. And I know there's many, many speakers, especially contestants, they count, they've got 700 words, I've got to get my words in. No, no, no. You want to give the audience the experience and let the words serve as a vehicle along with your body, yeah. along with your silence, to get the message across. The here, emotion, the, pardon me? I'm sorry, you've got another message from somebody. Sorry? Oh, the emotion. I was crying when you were talking about your family coming, on, coming to the convention oh. in 1995 with oh. your card. Oh, it, it, you know, so to bring that in as well, and I could even sense the emotion slightly watery in your eyes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a memory that is indelible. Like the the, the yeah. thought that my kids, and the thing is, I, I don't have time to hope for the whole story. I was competing at level five, which was the, at the time was called the regional, now it's semi-final, but I remember I was stumbling over something. I couldn't quite feel what was happening. It wasn't, there was a, I was missing a bit of humor that I thought would have added some spice to the speech. And my 11-year-old daughter heard me tell a, a really corny joke. Said, Dad, use that in your speech. It's funny. Use that in your speech. I said, baby, what do you know? You're 11 years old. What are you talking about? Dad, it's funny. Use it. I used it in my speech. I got a 13-second laugh from an audience. <laughs> now, in Toastmasters... In any forum, 13 seconds for a lap is interminable. Yeah. Because what? But they were always part of the process. They were supportive. They were there for me. And they have, you know, two years I competed, my family came. The first year my wife was pregnant with David, who is now 26. But they came to both contests. And I, can even, I worked at Reader's Digest. And the chief executive officer of Reader's Digest instructed my senior vice president, to pay all the expenses for my wife, my children, and me to go to California, hotel, airfl airfare, meals, ground transportation, everything, because the company 
was behind me. Talk okay. about unity and stronger together. I could talk about this all day long. It's dear to my heart. Yeah. And after COVID-19 has hit so many districts so badly, I want mm -hmm. to inspire Toastmasters to stay strong, stay together, because what we have is transformational. How do yeah. I know? I'm a testimony of it.